Hello everybody, uh, today I'm going to be doing a little physics problem that uh, someone suggested to me in my comments on, on the last F equals MA, or on my video on the F, F equals MA problem. Uh, it seemed like y'all would like more uh, physics type content. Uh, I will certainly try um, my best to do that. So here we have uh, a Ferris wheel. Um, so just a circle and it has five spokes that are evenly distributed so these are all equal angles I tried my best to, to make it look like that but we're just going to assume that and we have five equal masses on the end and we want to prove that this ferris wheel will be in static equilibrium no matter the position right if I were to rotate this figure um, that the Ferris wheel would be in equal uh, static equilibrium, assuming that the spokes are massless. So the only masses are here are these five points. And they all have equal mass. So static equilibrium means that there is no that the net torque is zero. Um, and 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 so we have we have a torque for each uh, for each point here specifically what torque is 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 the cross product of the force that each mass or that or in, in generality the, the the torque is the cross product of the force vector and position vector so we can find position vectors for these five masses and cross it with the force but what do we notice about the force vector? Force, just like the name of the competition implies, force is equal to mass times acceleration. That's Newton's, I want to say, second law. Um, and so, since all the masses are equal, and all of their, all of the accelerations are equal, aka e uh, the gravitational acceleration, then basically all of the forces are equal. And so we're taking a torque, we're looking at the torque for each mass, right, individually, but we want to add them up. And so we can use the fact that the cross product is uh, distributive. And the, the reason is actually simpler than I thought it would be. I don't know why that line just got there. Uh, and it's because, it's simply because um, and I, w I won't really prove it, but it's just because matrices you can you can um, it's just like matrix addition basically uh, component wise. Um, actually, that doesn't make any sense. But but the cross product is distributive, and there, there's you can show that in generality. But I'm not going to do that today. Um, so anyway. Since all the forces are are equal, right? It'll be some downward downward force F, and so we can just assume. So let's assume this is on the x y plane, right? Let's let's pick a coordinate grid, coordinate system. So we have x axis this way, a y, and, and it's centered. Let's say our coordinate grid is centered on the red point, right? Now we also have a z-axis, which I'll do my best to illustrate, which goes sort of through the plane of, of your monitor, right? It's, um, it goes through this point, but it's perpendicular to, to this line, the y-axis and the x-axis. So it's sort of going through the plane here. And the z-axis, since uh, since F and R both exist on the XY plane because everything ha is happening here on the XY plane which is the plane of this page then the torque will exist on the z-axis basically so we have a torque on, on the z-axis um, but, but that's not really important for us right we just want to show that this will induce a zero a zero torque. 
But basically we can assume that f is equal to negative, uh, let me remember how to write a j, gosh, uh, is equal to negative times the j vector, which is the down, the unit vector in the in the y direction, j, j, j hat, j hat is the name, j, negative j hat, right? So it's just a unit length pointing downwards, right? And we can assume that because all the masses are equal and all the accelerations are equal, and so all the forces are equal. And so if we really did get a net torque of zero, then we would be able to divide out by all of those constants. So we can just assume that F is something simple like this. Now, so, so we want to assume that, or we want to prove that no matter how I position these masses, as, as long as they're equally spaced, that I will have static equilibrium. So let's say the position vector, and, and let's just say that this, this Ferris wheel is the unit circle, right? And we can assume that as well. So let's say we have some position vector for this mass, right? And furthermore, let's assume that it's, it's an angle of theta above the positive x-axis. And so this will be sort of, this is just like the first mass we encounter, in quotes. Now our torque, right, so, so we want to, since we're distributing this force, right, we want to show that if we take the torque on, or, or if we take the force vector, and we cross it with the sum of every, of every position vector, we want to show that that's zero. And one way we can do that is by showing that the sum of the position vectors is zero, no matter what this angle theta is, right? If theta were equal to zero, then that would be uh, the typical problem of showing that, that the roots of unity add to zero, which is pretty standard, uh, like pretty standard proof just using the equation for the roots of unity, right? Because that's sort of the connection here in this problem, is that since we're assuming this is a unit circle, and these five points are evenly distributed, then they're sort of like roots of unity, but they've been tilted by some angle theta. But we want to show that no matter what theta is, we want to show that the sum of their positions is zero. And and specifically, all we have to show is is that the sum of their x positions are zero. But it it is tr it is still true that the sum of their y positions is zero. And the reason why we only care about the x is if you're looking at the cross product here, the the force vector is just zero negative one zero, and we will have some r say that the the, the r is just the sum, right? So we have the x sum and the y sum. But obviously the z sum is zero because nothing is happening on the z axis. Everything is happening on the x, y plane. And if you were to look at this determinant, obviously everything will be zero except for if you look at k hat, when you take this derivative, right? But zero times r, y is just zero. So you're just looking at r, x, k hat. So you want to show that the sum of all the x positions is zero. So what are all the x positions? So we know that this x position is just cosine of theta, right? Because this length is one. So this length is just cosine of theta. That's sort of a definition, right? The length to this point here. Then after each each next point on the Ferris wheel, since it's equally spaced apart, this has an angle measure of uh, 72, 72 degrees, or 2 pi over 5 radians. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's right. Um, and so this angle here, or, or this length, to the, the x position will be cosine of theta plus 2 pi over 5. 
and this will be cosine of theta plus 4 over 5, 4 pi over 5, and this will be cosine of theta plus 6 pi over 5, and this will be cosine of theta plus 8 pi over 5. So we want to show that the sum of those five cosines is indeed equal to zero. So we have this total expression, right? And what we can do is simply use the co cosine addition formula. That will break each of these, uh, let me stick to black here, that will break each of these into two pieces, right? One will be totally cosines, right? Cosine of theta times cosine of 2 pi theta, or 2 pi over 5, sorry. And the other one will be negative sine of theta times sine of 2 pi over 5. So we get two pieces. And we'll notice that all of the cosines, right, if we write all of this out, all of the cosines, we can factor out a cosine of theta. So we get is cosine of theta times and then the sum of these numbers. And we know that this is actually just the normal problem when theta is equal to zero. And so this is the sum of the real parts of the roots of unity, of the fifth roots of unity. So we know that this is equal to zero. And then the second part is that we have these minus sine theta terms. So let's let's look at that. And so now so we now have this negative sine of theta factored out. And I've included the zero here. Because zero is sine of zero. So now and and, and and one was cosine of zero, right? So now we basically have the same sum, but for the sines of the angles of the roots of unity, of the fifth roots of unity. So this is equal to the sum of the y components. But since the sum of all the fifth roots of unity is just zero, it has a real part of zero, which is right here. This is the real part. And it has an imaginary part of zero, which is right here the sum of all the y components. So since this is 0 and this is 0, the total sum is just equal to 0, which means that our net torque is equal to 0, and we, are ha and we have static equilibrium. Thank you for watching, and thank you to, I don't know how to pronounce your, your username, but it's like that. Thank you for uh, suggesting this problem. I enjoyed uh, solving it. Um, and, and thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.